So you, you talk a lot about chance and randomness and selecting the people that you photograph and the stories that you tell, but how do you go about choosing a certain person over, you know, the one sitting right next to them? Well, so, I mean, again, this is, <laughs> you want, am I answering about humans of New York two years ago or am I answering about humans of New York now? Um, it's like, you know, humans of New York two years ago, like I, it's, it was all random. It was all random. Um, and I would just walk through and what I was mainly looking for. The one variable that I needed most was time. You know, mm -hmm. I, I tried to make, I tried to make choose as wide of a selection, go to as many different neighborhoods as possible. But the one thing I needed from everybody was time. These interviews take time. A lot of times they take an hour, they take an hour and a half. They're pretty intense. And so I would normally be looking for somebody who was in a state of repose. Maybe they're sitting on a bench, maybe they're leaning up against a wall, smoking a cigarette. A lot of cigarette smokers on humans, <laughs> though they have a little bit of time. Um, so beforehand it was time. Um, now I, my selection process involves an inbox full of 20,000 stories. My assistant has cut them down a little bit. Maybe she's cut out 50% of them, um, you know, just to give me a fighting chance. But, you know, I'm reading and, you know, I'm, it's taken me, I'm still, these, all 20,000 of these emails came in within like 72 hours of me asking for stories. Like the people I'm replying to now, like wrote in months ago and I've completely forgotten they've written it. <laughs> now I'm just like dropping, hey, I'm sorry, I'm just getting to this. And so what I do now is, I, is I'm looking, it's, that, that's why the work's changed so much recently. It's gone from looking for anybody and then focusing on the interview. Now the interview is much less important because so mm. much information is already laid out there. And so I'm looking at the story and I'm judging it based on characteristic and variables that I've learned through experience. Not, make, not just a compelling story, but a story that is compelling and will work in short form, which is my art. Um, I have 2,200 characters. Um, that is the character limit on Instagram. And so I mainly, I'm looking for stories that are, are going to ha maintain their, their weight and their impact when constricted in, into a short form. So you might have an hour long, really deep conversation with someone. How do you decide what to pull out that would represent them in that specific moment in time? Um, it, it's, it's all contextual. Every interview is different. I don't ever have a list of questions or, or anything. And it's different. Um, the street interviews are a lot different than the remote interviews because the street interviews always start from zero. Um, and I'm trying to identify the events and conflicts in their life upon which I can, I can build a story around, um, that, you know, and, and normally, you know, I will let them lead the interview. I will say, you know, what is your biggest challenge right now? Either that or what is the biggest challenge that you've overcome? Chances are the, the biggest challenge that they've overcome is the thing that has formed them the most, one, and the two, the thing that they've spent the most time thinking about. So not only is it going to be the, the story that's most impactful and material to their life and who they become, but it's also going to be the story that's given them the most perspective, platform, and impact, or not insight into the world. It's like everybody's an expert in their particular problem. You know what I mean? Because that's, that's, that's what we think about the most. And so it's like, and everybody has a, a very distinct struggle in their life and that they've been forced to compensate for and create solutions for and think about. And it, it's given them a very unique perspective on the world formed by that struggle. And it's like, if, it's, if you can find what that person's struggling with, you can a lot of times find the one thing that they can speak to with more wisdom than anybody else. Uh, and so that's, that's when I'm on the street, what I'm normally looking for. We're talking about struggles uh, we're talking about things that have been overcome. Um, with the remote interviews, um, the story's there, it's in front of me. A lot of times I would just use that as scaffolding. And then I'm, I'm a lot of times, and it changes every time. Sometimes there's just these amazing writers that just make my yeah. job super easy. Um, you know, a lot of times there's a relationship that I know is a fascinating relationship, but I need the thread, I need the arc that's going to 
turn it into a story where, you know, it starts and then something happens and there's some resolution, some change. Um, and so, you know, those, those interviews are, you know, about either trying to take, take something that like, Oh, my dad was a motorcyclist and he was the, you know, greatest stunt man in, you know, Western Canada. And he, you know, hopped over, you know, hundreds of cliffs, but he, you know, he always came home every single night and, you know, was telling, and it's just clear that it's a very interesting character, you know, but Humans of New York's not good in biographies. It, it can't do cradle to grave, like that doesn't work. And so it's the story, you know, what, what is the story that can be told on this blog? Uh, and that's always the puzzle is taking a interesting relationship or an interesting life or an interesting person and getting it into a story that I can tell about something that happened in this person's life that when that story is over, you, you feel like you know the person yeah. in the same way that if you just read a narrative of their life from the beginning to the end.